My dad was the kindest, most caring man I've ever had the pleasure of knowing. He was a very sensitive man who would tear up easily. I would always catch him secretly wiping away a tear whenever he got emotional. He was a funny Yorkshire man with the quirkiest sense of humour. And above all of this, I knew more than anything that the love he had for his family was unmeasurable. Now, you're probably wondering why am I telling you this? Why do we need to know your dad's personality for your TEDx talk? But it's so important that I tell you. To make my point the best I can, then you need to have a clear insight into the man I called my dad and a man people called Steve. Because quite often, when I tell people that he was an alcoholic, they have a very preconceived and distorted vision of how he may have come across. Now, before I go any further, I would like to ask you a question. And I want you to really think about this and be absolutely unapologetically honest with yourself. Have you ever stereotyped an alcoholic? And by stereotype, I mean, have you ever thought to yourself or allowed that alcoholics are weak, overindulgent, and a burden to the health system? Because if you find yourself nodding to those statements, then I would like to say this to you. Perhaps alcoholism didn't kill my dad. And maybe you did. Maybe I did. Now go with me on this because I'm aware of how bold that statement was. But the stigma and lack of awareness around a very serious disease ultimately caused my dad's death. He was afraid to seek early intervention and support because in his own words, he was ashamed. Now, there are three facts associated with alcohol and alcohol addiction that I must share with you. And I've broken them down into three categories, danger, dependence, and disease. Professor David Nutz, a world-renowned professor of neuropsychopharmacology, categorizes alcohol as the most dangerous drug in the UK beating crack and heroin because of the harm it causes the user but the repercussions it also has on society. Alcohol is one of a few substances where withdrawal alone can directly kill you. So to put it bluntly, if you are physically dependent on alcohol and abruptly stop drinking, then you're at a significant risk of death. Alcohol addiction is widely recognised within the medical industry as a disease. A chronic relapsing brain disorder characterised by an impaired ability to stop or control alcohol use. Now, I'm not talking to you today from an academic perspective. I'm not an expert within this area. But I'm coming from a lived experience point of view. I have witnessed the stigma portrayed towards an alcoholic. I've seen it, I've felt it, I've heard it, and I've been part of it, but I was wrong. We were all wrong and I know that now. So I stand here today to share with you what I have learnt about alcohol addiction and hope that in doing so, we can contribute towards shifting society's mindset so that we can empower alcoholics to recovery rather than shaming them into silence and anonymity. My dad told me that he drank to forget. He drank to numb the overwhelming anxiety, depression and PTSD. He drank because his generation and many other generations taught him that it was a weakness to discuss your mental health. So he drowned out the noise with the euphoric effects of alcohol instead. I hated him at times. I was angry, I was bitter, and I even went as far as thinking that he was a weak and selfish man who had no self-control. Growing up, my dad's addiction was to be unspoken of. Don't tell anyone. Don't let anyone know he drinks heavily. We didn't even admit it to ourselves. Looking back, we were feeding the stigma. By staying quiet and not being his advocate, 
We allowed him to get sucked into the shame and humiliation that society currently projects towards alcoholics. On the 31st of August, 2017, he died as a result of excessive drinking. Shame and humiliation prevented my dad from accessing support. Stigma was partly to blame for his death. Now, society often shifts culpability and blames the alcoholic for their lack of willpower. And this was evident in my dad's case. Following his death, I was reminded that he did it to himself. He only had himself to blame and it was self-inflicted. Now, if we're being technical, then yes, perhaps it was self-inflicted. But does that same logic not apply to other self-inflicted illnesses? Because 90% of lung cancers are caused by smoking. A massive contributing factor to developing type 2 diabetes is diet and inactiveness. Some of the most common illnesses brought on by our lifestyle choices are high cholesterol and high blood pressure. If you suffered from one of those illnesses, would you feel ashamed to seek medical treatment? Alcohol is a socially accepted, easily accessible and legal substance and is part of most people's diets. Yet we continue to shame those who become addicted to its euphoric side effects as overindulgent and weak. We shame them into remaining silent and anonymous to protect their reputation. Professor David Nutt very powerfully states, it's not your fault you want to drink. Alcohol is a very powerful and addictive drug that's not only legal, but enmeshed in our everyday lives. You see, my dad didn't abuse alcohol. Alcohol abused him. And he was powerless to do anything about it without clinical professional help. It's not as simple as having willpower to just come off it. Once you become physically dependent on alcohol, it has gotten a hold of you. And in order to survive, you have no choice but to carry on drinking until you access clinical support. Which means for the majority of alcoholics, Accessing that support is harder than coping with the disease itself. Let me put that into perspective for you. Two weeks before my dad died, I pleaded with him to get help, but he wouldn't. He told me that it was self-inflicted, that it was a weakness, and that he didn't want to waste his doctor's time. Sadly, it would seem that he is not alone in that thought process. It is estimated that there are 1.6 million people in the UK physically dependent on alcohol and less than a quarter of them are seeking support. Many alcoholics claim that stigma and shame prevent them from recovering. Now, I am by no means suggesting that society is responsible for the alcoholism crisis upon us. I am perfectly aware that we can only help so much and that it is the sole responsibility of an alcoholic to commit to recovery. But we can help in other ways. For starters, we can liberate them from the stigma by showing genuine and sincere support. We can empower them to seek treatment and give them the encouragement to recover openly and freely without judgment or stereotype. The more shame we place upon an alcoholic will only feed their disease and the vicious cycle will continue. If we are to move forward positively, then we need to change the way we view alcoholism. So I come to you today as a daughter, a daughter of an alcoholic who had a name. He was called Steve. And he had a family who loved him unconditionally. But he was failed significantly by society's cruel stereotype against him. If you take anything away from my talk today, I hope that it's empathy, compassion, and an understanding that alcoholics are not self-indulgent and weak, but they are fighting 
a daily battle to survive a deadly and often terminal disease. Perhaps if collectively we can show more encouragement and understanding, then those 1.6 million dependent drinkers in the UK may feel empowered to stay on track to a wonderful life of sobriety.